Welcome to fun, fun, fun art class. Hi, my friends. I'm your teacher, Teacher Sophie. Are you happy to meet me? Yes, I'm also very happy to meet you. Friends, do you know what we are going to make today? Yes, we are going to make a helmet and a sword. For this class, you only need one square paper and three rectangular papers, which are half of the square paper. We we'll also need a scissors. Friends, now it's time to begin our class. But before we begin our class, if you like this program and you want to be part of us, you can SMS us to the number on your screen. You can call us or send a picture of what you made in this class. We also have Facebook and YouTube page. You can go and search GBS TV Africa for many other episodes. Don't forget to give us comments. Friends, now it's time to begin our class. Are you ready? Let's go! Time to make. First, we are going to make the helmet. We are going to use the square paper. We are going to fold it half as a triangle shape. From here, we will open again and fold again half as a triangle shape again. From here, you make this point, point your side, and make this edge meet with the middle. So you're going to fold like this. Also this side, you make this point meet with the middle. From here, you're going to lift this up, but you won't fold it here until half, but a little bit higher. And then you fold it. You also fold this side, but it should be the same point with this part. So you make sure it be the same, and then press this side and stretch, and then fold. Here, now you use the scissors. In here, you have to fold, you have to cut this part, but you should cut it so that this part is wider than this part. So, You cut it like this. Also this side, you should cut the same way. Like that. Next, you see this part. You fold it like this. Also on this side, 
you fold it the same way like this. Next, you'll find two papers here, but you'll use the upper paper and fold it only until this point. You fold it the same way again, but only this much. Next, we are going to fold this upwards. You fold it upwards and then you open and the one you folded, you put it inside the helmet. So you put it inside. And then press it. Ta-da! We are done with the helmet. Next, we are going to do the sword. We are going to first make the inside blade of the sword. So, you bring one paper, which is the half of the square paper, and then fold it half like this. Next, you open and fold it as much as you want the handle to be. So for me, I fold it about this much. Next, you'll turn the paper and then make this edge meets the middle point. Also this part, you make this edge meet the middle point. Next, you make this part before that like this. Also this part, you do the same and fold it like this. Also, again, you fold it half like this. Then we are done with the blade. Next, we are going to do this part of the blade. So you'll bring one paper and fold it half this way. And also open and fold it half again this way. Next, you make this edge be folded until the middle point. So you fold it. Also this side, you make this part meet the middle point. You fold it half, from here you fold it half, and then also make this point meet this middle point. Next, 
will make this point meet until this edge. So your fold will fold this much. And then when you see carefully, there's a space where you can put this part. So you put it inside, fold it. Next, you fold this part like this. And also backward, you do the same like this. And also in this part, you fold it like this. And also backward, like this. From here, you see it opens. We have to fold it the way we folded the triangle. The reason why we fold it like this to make it easier when you open so that you can fold it easily. Even this side, when you open and try to fold it, it will be more easier than just doing it. Next, you see these points will make it feel more smooth. So you fold it like this. Also this part, you fold it like this. Then we are done. Next, we'll make the case of the sword. So we'll use the last paper which is half of the square paper. We'll first fold it half this way. And here we'll first fold it just a little bit. And then check this white part you measure and make sure when you fold it, it will be larger than the blade. So from here, you fold it. Next, you make this point to meet the half of the paper. You will fold again like this. And we'll also fold again the way we fold it. Here, we'll open and then you see you made some space this part where this part can enter. This part could be a little bit hard, but you can follow well and put it. So in this part, you put this edge. And also this part inside, you put this edge. If it comes out, you have to put it again. You put it inside. And then 
Goldie. Next, we'll fold it as triangular shape at this edge, onward and backward. So this side, we have to open this inside part. and push it inside words and fold it here could be a little bit hard so you can use a pen to push it inside or use the scissors that you bought this part and press it so that you can fold it more easily Ta-da! We finished making the case. Now we are going to learn how to put them together. We we'll first bring the blade and bring this part and put it inside. Until this much. Also this one, you should put it inside while maintaining the same shape. So here, we we'll put it. So even this side, you can just put it Then, ta-da! We finished making a helmet and a sword! Friends, was it easy and fun to make it? I hope it was very easy and very fun to make it. You can use more bigger papers to make this and put it on your head. Also this one, you can make it with a bigger paper and play with it. Or you can bring a doll like me and then put it on your doll. This is how you can play. Then you won't feel lonely and it will be more fun playing with your dolls. Friends, now it's time to finish our class. But before we finish, if you like this program and you want to be part of us, you can SMS us through the number on your screen. You can call us or send a picture of what you made in this class. We also have Facebook and YouTube page. You can go and search DBS TV Africa for many other episodes. Also, don't forget to give us comments. Now, it's really time to finish our class. Next time, I'll bring more fun and interesting things. Then, until next time, bye! Hello children, how are you? I hope you are all doing well. My name is Teacher Teresa. So today again we are going to look at the Bible, we are going to learn from the Bible. So children, do you have your Bibles? So ready together, let's open our Bibles from the book of John, chapter 5, from verse 1 up to 8. Let's read together. Uh, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by, by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. 
For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity that thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another stepeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. So children, today we've read this story about the man who had infirmity uh, for 38 years. So this man uh, always could go to the pool. The Bible says the pool of Bethesda, which had five porches. So in this pool of Bethesda, there were people with all kind of illness. Some were blind, some were lame. So among all these also, there was the man with infirmity with 38 years. So these people were there every day waiting for the water to be troubled. So the water would be troubled by an angel. So after the angel troubled the water, then the one who could enter into the water first would be uh, made whole. So this man, all along he was there. Uh, he had the infirmity for 38 years, so he could not walk. So when the water was troubled, how could he ra run and enter into the water as the first one? He could not. So some people were there like the blind men, uh, the people who were, uh, who were lame. Then p many people could enter into the pool uh, before he entered. So luckily one time Jesus Christ was passing by. Then the Bible says there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So now they are in Jerusalem, uh, Jesus met this. Uh, near that, now in the pool of Bethesda, Jesus met uh, the man with infirmity for 38 years. So if you read from the Bible, we can read from verse, um, verse 5. The Bible says, And a certain man was there which had infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? So Jesus Christ met him in that situation whereby he could do nothing for himself. So Jesus Christ asked him, would you like to be made whole? Then how could he answer? Then if you read verse 7, the important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another stepeth down before me. So this man uh, could answer Jesus Christ, I have no man. Uh, really, by his own effort and by his own struggle, he could not uh, enter as the first one into the pool uh, when the water was troubled. So he was just there, miserable, nobody could help him. He had no power by himself. So to him, he told Jesus, I have no man. Then Jesus answered and said unto him, Rise up, take, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Then, children, let's think about this man. He was in this state for 38 good years, meaning for 38 years, he could not rise up, he could not stand up, he could not walk by himself. Then Jesus told him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. So what happened? Uh, verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. Immediately the man was made whole. He took up his bed and walked. Children, how could this man uh, walk? Was it very easy for him to walk? Uh, if, if we look at his situation, he could have had this kind of a thought. For 38 years, I've never walked. Then how can you tell me just to rise, take up my bed and walk? He could have had this kind of thoughts. Jesus, I cannot walk. Jesus, I don't have any strength to walk by myself. But if you look at the Bible, uh, this man was able to receive the word of Jesus Christ the way it is. Then when she, he was able to receive the word of Jesus Christ, this man was able to walk. Immediately he was able to walk. So he walked by which power? He walked by which strength? 
He walked by the power of the word of Jesus Christ. He walked by the power of the word. Uh, children in our life, how are we living our life? Uh, normally, uh, all of us children, we want to live a happy life in our lives, right? We want to live a good, a good life. Then how can I live a good life and a happy life? So many times we think, uh, I have to try and do something for me uh, to live a happy and a good life. So if we, if we think about this man who had infirmity for 38 years, uh, how could he be happy? How could he live a happy life? All along his life, for 38 years, he lived struggling and trying to uh, live a good life and even to change his life. But for all those years, he could not change uh, his life. He could not live a happy life. So children, for us to be happy, uh, many times we think, for me to be happy, I, have to have, I, I need to have a lot of money, I need to have a lot of wealth. So many people think happiness is equals to money. Children, do you think like this? Uh, if, if, if this man had a lot of money, could he be happy? No. The, the, as much as he tried to be happy by himself, he could not be happy. So how could he receive happiness in his life? So he was able to receive happiness when he was able to receive the word of Jesus Christ the way it was in his heart. So same with our lives, children. For us to be happy, uh, we need to only receive the word of Jesus Christ the way it is, without adding any of my thoughts, without adding any of my ways. So if I just receive the word of God in my heart the way it is, I'm able to gain, we are able to gain strength. We are able to gain joy and happiness in our life. So this man who could not walk for all those years, he was able to, he was able to walk. Children, uh, every, time, uh, God, every time we have the word of God. Also, God gave us the word of God. God gave us the Bible. Children, uh, as, as, as we are reading the Bible, as we are learning from the Bible, then in the Bible we have the word of God. Then, if you read in the Bible, Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, meaning the Word is God. Then, if I'm able to learn the Word of God, meaning I'm able to, uh, to learn God. So, for me to be happy, I have to learn God. I have to gain God in my heart. So, this man who had infirmity for 38 years, how was he able to uh, get whole? How was he able to rise up, take, take his bed and walk? He was able to receive the word of Jesus Christ the way it is. Children, we are going to read another verse from the book of Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse, verse 10. Are you there, children? Let's read together. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Bible says we are sanctified. Children, do you know the meaning of the word sanctified? The word sanctified means we are made holy. Meaning if you are made holy, holy means to be uh, without sin. Children, are we really without sin? Do we have sin in our hearts? Uh, many times it's not easy for us to confess we don't have sin. Why? Because we look at ourselves. How can I say I don't have sin. And last time I lied to my mom, last time I did something wrong, so last time I did some mistake, mistakes, how can I say I don't have sin? So children, as much as we are looking upon ourselves, we can never say we don't have sin. So likewise, if the man with the infirmity for 38 years could look upon himself, for 38 years I've never walked. Then Jesus, how can you tell me to rise up, take my bed and walk? My legs have no strength. But he could not look upon himself. More than looking upon himself, he received the word of Jesus Christ the way it was. Then from that point, immediately, he was able to walk. Someone who could not walk for 38 years. So children, many times it's not easy for us to say we don't have sin. Because we look at ourselves. So more than believing on what we see from ourselves, more than believing on how we are, 
we should believe the word of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the word of Jesus Christ is saying in Hebrews 10, he has sanctified us once and for all. He has made us holy, righteous, and perfect. Then children, if we receive the word of Jesus Christ the way it is, surely already he made us righteous. Already he made us holy. Already he made us perfect. Already he washed away all of, all of our sins. So if we believe in the word of Jesus Christ, then in our hearts, deep within our hearts, we are able to be free and free from sin. Then you know, children, are you happy when your hearts are full of sin? Are we happy when we live in sin? Nobody is happy living a life of sin. We all want to live a life that, a life that is pleasing God, a life that makes God happy. Then no matter how much we try to make God happy, do we really make him happy? No. Many times we make a lot of mistakes. Many times we, we go against God. So important is we should not look upon ourselves. We should look on what is God saying about me. What is the word of God saying about me? Already he sanctified me. Meaning already he washed my sins once and for all. Meaning if he washed my sins once and for all, eternally, until the end. So already he made me holy without, without sin. So children, if we believe this, we are able to live a happy life. Then we are able to have joy in our hearts. You know, children, all problems of life start from the heart. Then if my heart has a problem, then I can never be happy in my life. No matter how much things I have, no matter how much diligence I may be having, no matter how much effort I have, these ones cannot make me happy. So what can make me happy? If my heart and the heart of God is one, then automatically my heart will be full of joy and full of happiness, not being bound by the situation or how my life is. So children, let's in our lives, in our daily lives, what are we believing in? Am I believing in my thoughts? Am I believing in my ways? Then this one cannot make me whole. How could this man with infirmity for 38 years be made whole? Not by his way. Actually, by the end of the day, he was saying, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is uh, troubled. So he, had no, he, had his, he didn't have any help from himself. So his only help was who? His only help was Jesus Christ. Then children, who is our help? Only Jesus Christ. Who is our hope? Only Jesus Christ. Who is our joy? Only Jesus Christ. So children, I wish, let's look upon who? Let's look upon Jesus Christ. Let's believe upon the word of God. What does the Bible say? Many times you should think, what does the Bible say about my heart? Already he sanctified me. He made me holy once and for all. So if we think about this man who had infirmity for 38 years, his life changed. Not because he did something. So our life, for our, for our lives to change, what do we have to do? Not by our effort. Only to connect our hearts with the heart of Jesus Christ. Only to connect our heart uh, with the word of Jesus Christ. Then from that time, our lives are able uh, to change. So we should not look upon ourselves, but believe in what the Bible says. So immediately this man was able to, uh, to walk. Immediately he took up his bed and, and walked. So immediately if we just unite ourselves with the word of God, then our hearts are able to change from sinner to righteous. This man was... His life changed from uh, being sick to being whole. Someone who could not walk, he was able to, he was able to walk. So children, uh, let's think about uh, how his life was able to change. Then if I think of how his life was able to change, also my life is able to, my life is able to change. So children, before I, as I finish, I want you to uh, watch a small video clip. Uh, which is talking more about the man who had infirmity for 38 years. 
Then as we watch together, we are going to see truly how his life was able to, uh, was able to change, not by his effort, but he was able just to receive the word of Jesus Christ the way it is. Not putting his thoughts, not putting his ways, but only believing the word of uh, Jesus Christ the way it was. Then his life was able, was able to change. So children, uh, let's watch together. Thank you.